Ah, Frank Lampard, Chelsea coach, Chelsea footballing legend, great footballing mind, pundit, intelligent, charismatic, sharp, some might say handsome, a spokesman for Chelsea Football Club, almost someone might say a quintessential manifestation of what it means to be Chelsea. The Chelsea manager. As we cross over halfway in Frank Lampard's first season managing Chelsea in the academy-fueled youthful revolution, how are things looking? Well, that's why I'm doing this video today. I want to get into his season so far, his tenure at Chelsea, and really have a look at what's happened and look beyond at what could happen. But before we get into that, let's talk about the how and why. Chelsea are a funny old club. For the best part of 20 years, certainly 16, 17 years, they've done the sort of mercenary manager model. Maybe that's a little bit unfair, but you know, the money manager model. Wow, that alliteration, money manager model. Maybe I should like copyright that or something. Anyway, you dig what I'm saying. You get in a trophy proven manager with a philosophy, an ideology, a certain confidence, a proven track record to come in, spend a bit of cash in West London and continue Chelsea's illustrious winning run of the last best part of 20 years. But for the first time since Roman Abramovich came to Chelsea in what, 2003? That's changed. Frank Lampard has come in. For the first time, Chelsea have gone in this era for an English manager, a young manager, a very, very inexperienced manager. Goes completely against the grain of all they've stood for ever since Abramovich came to the club. So why? Why, why, why? Well, let's look at the tangible facts. Transfer ban needed a feel-good factor. So the transfer ban you bring in someone like Frank Lampard who was already working with Jody Morris, you bring in Joe Edwards, there's that connectivity to the academy which everyone recognises is incredibly strong and has a lot of talent in. Talent that you might be able to rely on getting you through a Premier League season and not getting relegated. <laughs> Maybe that's a bit harsh but you know what I mean. Feel good factor. Now whatever your opinion of Maurizio Sarri is, he's a good obviously a very good football coach, he's got a very strong footballing philosophy. Through probably a lot of his own fault, there was no feel-good factor, or very little at Stamford Bridge last season. Sure, fans of Chelsea from across world football did back the coach and like what he was trying to do, myself included to a degree, there was a certain feel-good factor gone, and that was between board, coaching staff, players, fans, there was no real harmony. Enter. Frank Lampard. Frank immediately was identified as the individual who could glue all of this back together, regardless of the results in what would happen on the pitch. Through turbulent times of a transfer ban and disharmony between fans and players and coaching staff and club generally, Lampard, the spokesman for Chelsea, like I said, the quintessential manifestation of what it means to be Chelsea in a man comes and heals the wounds of whatever's gone wrong at Chelsea of late. And he does that. Now Chelsea obviously identified Frank as being able to do so because they watched him at his time at Derby. To be honest, it predates that. You watch Frank as like a captain of Chelsea or a player of Chelsea, the way he'd do press conferences, the way he'd talk to the media. He got into punditry after his playing career and he's very, very, well, everyone knew what he was like. He speaks very well, he's very intelligent, and he's very thoughtful of how he speaks. This was only fermented further at his year at Derby. His, I watched his opening press conference with Mel Morris and was like, damn, this is really impressive. Maybe one day he could be Chelsea coach, not knowing it would be next season. So, Frank Lampard's in. He healed the wounds of the disharmony. He put a good face on. The media lapped all of what he had to say up. Almost as much as Jose Mourinho Mark 1, maybe not as much because he doesn't say as radical outspoken stuff as Jose Mourinho, but he's very, very headstrong, he's determined and he believes in you know the kids, he believes in his ideas, but he believes in himself and his ability to learn through failure. So let's get on to how he's doing at Chelsea. Now before we talk about tangible results and stuff like that, I want to just bring up what I've just said through failure because I think that is very, very important. Frank Lampard is a young coach and sure he backs himself to the hilt and he believes in his ability, intelligence and desire to learn and succeed at Chelsea, the club he loves so, so much. But he puts it on the table that he is growing and learning with the players. 
Not doesn't wear on his sleeve too much because that would be shown as a sign of weakness and Frank Lampard is not the character that wants to show weakness ever. But there's a certain humility to it. Social intelligence, emotional intelligence, not just for himself and his coaching staff around him and the club above him, but to the fans, the players. He wants to sort of maintain a sort of, I don't want to say dominance, but an authority regardless above all else, but at the same time showing compassion. Now this is a really, really important um, element of coaching. I'd use Jurgen Klopp as an example. Obviously he's much further along in his managerial coaching career and has a lot has honed a lot more skills and knowledge as a coach. In a different way to Lampard, but Klopp definitely highlights his own emotional or social weaknesses when he says something to a, another coach or a, a journalist or a pundit aggressively, like Klopp can definitely outburst he'll stop himself and he'll apologize and sometimes he'll self-evaluate and self-assess openly in front of everyone and that is really really important if you feel like I'm the be all or end all my way or the highway dogmatic coaching state of mind especially in modern football where you've got to be emotionally intelligent and you've got to be socially intelligent if you have that state of mind you'll implode. Please see Jose Mourinho the last few years. So it's important, Frank Lampard is a young forward thinking coach and he has, I think, all the social and emotional attributes in his application to coaching to succeed. And I think that's shown through the first half of the season, the way he's been good with the players, the way he's talked, we did that interview with Gary Lineker saying, at first he had an open door policy at Derby, he had to change that, he learned how he had to deal with the players himself, he had these ideas of when he first became a coach, that he's already had to readjust and he's openly talking about it. So I wanted to basically put that in a box, explain how I think personally he has the psychological outlook to be a really really successful coach, that's half the reason I think why Chelsea hired him in the first place and he's only demonstrated that more and more throughout the first half of this season. Right, so tangible results. Chelsea are in the top four and they're five points clear of fifth Man United. But really, that does not tell the whole story. Chelsea have obviously had a few unsettling, upsetting losses at home to Bournemouth, West Ham, you know, performances where it, it, it let the fan base down, but really I think, people can take a step back and look at the grand context of things and understand that this is not just a regular Chelsea team with a reg regular Chelsea coach that had a poor performance. This is a coach landing on the job with some youngsters that really will show, you know, inconsistencies until they've settled in a big first team like Chelsea and that's kind of inevitable. So a lot of these performances can be forgiven but on the way this sort of true raw belief of youth and talent married together have caused some like awesome performances like away at Ajax, away at both North London teams against Tottenham and Arsenal and a few more on the way superb performances against Liverpool and Manchester City even if perhaps they didn't get the result they wanted. Certainly he had Jurgen Klopp on the ropes making defensive substitutions in the second half and time wasting when Chelsea played them. Pep Guardiola at the Etihad conceded the majority of possession to Chelsea for the first time in his managerial career um, in all clubs he's managed conceding the majority of the possession so that was like a record breaker. Fair enough City still won but he's come out and maintained ever since that was the hardest game of the season for him. So Chelsea's youngsters have flexed their guns. Sure Frank Lampard will maintain he hasn't been able to bring in signings yet and we'll get on to that in just a second but generally in terms of working what he's got Chelsea have absolutely been punching above their weight or well, maybe not punching above their weight but they're ahead of schedule maybe Frank Lampard certainly throughout the really positive run early doors really hated all the praise and he kept reiterating and maintaining look I don't like all this praise we've got problems he didn't say we're getting lucky but I think he saw the problems that perhaps not everyone else saw those problems came to surface and Chelsea had some poor run of results recently but still people had Chelsea down for sixth seventh you know not getting out of the Champions League group granted it's a lot down to Manchester United Tottenham and Arsenal underperforming while Chelsea are comfortably in fourth position at the moment but still, Chelsea have overperformed in terms of what people's premonitions were for them. So Lampard's doing a good job, but it has to be in the context of learning on the job. And the next big test is this, bringing in players. Sure, at Derby, he was smart in bringing in the low knees of Mason Mount and Harry Wilson, and he knew what he wanted to develop in terms of his project. But can he translate that to the transfer window with 
tens, hundreds of millions of pounds transfer budget. That's the next big test for Frank Lampard. I think so far this story is a success and it's quite a feel good story. Fans of opposition clubs are rooting for him in a way. Many of them won't admit it, but a lot of them will. A lot of people want Frank Lampard to succeed in football. So in many ways, he's passed loads of tests so far. The next test, like I said, is can he do well with transfers and bring in the right men? Maurizio Pochettino, for example, an excellent player coach never really proved himself with transfers and bringing in decent transfers. Sure, he developed players well, but you know, he's probably yet to prove that even now. So Frank Lampard's got to do that. But for me, provided he maintains the same stance of learning on the job, keeping the players in the right mindset, and basically re-evaluating himself, reassessing himself as he goes, I think he's the perfect candidate to take Chelsea forwards and be a successful modern day footballing coach. Hopefully that can be at Chelsea and it all works out in this current sort of cocktail of things going on. Still, I wanted to make this video and talk about my perspective on Frank Lampard to Chelsea because I'm a Chelsea fan, he's my favorite Chelsea player of all time, um, and it is a very, very interesting situation at Chelsea Football Club. And as the season got started, people kind of forget about the narrative and the story. And I wanted to take a minute to hone in the context of what's going on and reflect what's happening on the pitch and how he is dealing with being a manager, especially at this level. So I wanna get your guys' thoughts and opinions on it and that's why I made this video. So please do get down in the comments below. Let me know how you think Frank Lampard's doing at Chelsea Football Club and do you think he could succeed at Chelsea moving forwards. If you've enjoyed today's video, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel. If you are new, I'll plug my second channel down in the, in the description if I can learn to speak English. Follow me on social media at Football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter. That's it from me, guys. You lot enjoy the football and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me baby